Welcome to the first edition of Jack White's Journal. In the coming weeks on this program, we're going to show you a variety of stories that will both inform and entertain. Later in this program, you're going to meet a man by the name of John Fulton, who trains racehorses here at the Del Mar track. And you're going to see how one of his horses does in an actual race. We'll introduce you to a man who was one of the original Our Gang comedy stars. And for almost 20 years, was San Diego's number one children's television host. We'll find out whatever happened to Johnny Downs. And George Munger from The Perfect Pan is going to show us how to prepare a pepper steak. If you're into astrology, then our resident astrologer is going to tell you what's in the stars in the week ahead for you. So as you can see, it's going to be an exciting 30 minutes and you're not going to want to miss any of it. The horses are on their way to the starting gate. I think maybe I'll go with Call Me Mister in the sixth. Or should we put a couple of bucks on Magic Star? Hmm. If you grew up in the 1920s, you might remember the little guy with a hat on. His name is Johnny Downs, one of the original members of the Our Gang comedies. He grew up in the 1930s and the 1940s, and he appeared in dozens of movie musicals just like this one. And from the mid-1950s until the mid-1970s, Johnny Downs was one of the most popular of all children's show hosts here in San Diego. Whatever happened to Johnny Downs? Where is he today? Well, he's alive and well living in Coronado. And recently, he took me on a tour of his vegetable garden. And then he greeted me with a typical Johnny Downs, hello. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> if you grew up in San Diego between 1953 and 1968, somewhere along the line, you had to hear that line. <laughs> I said it a few times. Johnny, what does Johnny Downs do today? Oh, golly, Jack. I, I, I'm not doing very much professionally. Uh, however, uh, I have a, a great vegetable garden that I keep busy with. Uh, my, my wife, my daughter, uh, one still living with us, is great tennis players. We play tennis just about every day. And we live very close to the ocean, and there's uh, all kinds of activities going on. Plus the fact that we had five children, and now they're grandchildren. And, you know, trying to keep up with that is pretty busy. <laughs> keeps you busy. Do youngsters still come up to you and say, I remember you when you did this or that? They do, Jack. They do. And... Uh, I, I can't call them youngsters anymore because they're uh, young adults with their own uh, uh, children. And some of them, uh, it's very, very rewarding experience because I, I really think they enjoyed the show, the way they, they talk about it to, to me. So it, it's very nice to be remembered. You used to have a lot of children come into the studio and be there with you live on television. Oh, yeah. Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, and uh, all kinds of groups. And about every day we would have, maybe not always on the show, but they would be up in the little uh, area we had for them to view it. And then afterwards there would be favors and things. You got to meet them and pictures and so on. For three and a half or four hours every day, it had to be an exciting time for Johnny Downs. Well, uh, we were only on for about a half hour. and. Uh, Actually, uh, I, just between you and I, didn't have to work at it quite that hard. It, it was, became pretty routine after a while when you had a good crew and all of the fine directors that we had over the period of years and floor managers and so on. Everything just sort of kind of fitted in. Uh, thanks for saying I worked four hours, but I didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> Does Johnny Downs ever think about maybe going back and becoming a character actor in movies? Hardly. No. Uh, I... I I'm a little disenchanted uh, with, the, with the kind of movies that we used to make, uh, or were made, uh, generally speaking, and ones that I was kind of involved in, most, for the most part anyway, and the kind of movies they make today, uh, I would feel a little uncomfortable. Do you remember dancing on the bar at the Hotel Del Coronado? Yes. Uh, uh, you mean uh, from the movie Coronado? Well, actually, uh, I hate to say it, but we didn't really dance on a bar in, in the movie Coronado. We danced around the bar. I was supposedly the rich boy, and the, and the guests came to the hotel, particularly the young girls, and I would come up and tip my hat and dance, and we danced around the stools and so on. But we did recreate that dance uh, for a documentary uh, that they did here at the, at the Coronado Hotel once, and I really did dance on that little dinky uh, skinny bar, and that was an experience, too. <laughs>
Once a song and dance man, always a song and dance man. Whatever happened to Johnny Downs? Well, he's alive and well in Coronado. We are in search of good taste, and we have come to George Munger and the Perfect Pan. And this morning, he's going to show us a quickie recipe. An excellent way to sear off steak so that it's juicy. It's a French method, a pan method of doing steak. All you need is basically a cast iron pan and a good heat source. All your ingredients, your steak, peppercorns, butter, parsley, Tabasco, Worcestershire sauce, lemon, and cognac. And the secret of the whole thing is to get the pan as hot as you can. Get these pep this salt in here so it's actually jumping around. We've salted the pan, nothing but salt in there. Before you start, you take your peppercorns and crush your peppercorns in a mortar and pestle or however you'd like. And you sprinkle them on your steak like this. Press them in. Put them on about a half an hour before you're ready. The French will take this after, it's, after you cook it and they'll scrape off any pepper they don't want. But if you love pepper, you just eat it with all the pepper. At this point, you're ready to go. They go in the pan. You basically go about a minute to a minute and a half, and that depends on the cut of your meat, uh, on how you like it, rare, medium, uh, medium rare, whatever. When you first take your meat, go ahead and trim it. Trim all the fat off it. In this case, the filet, you trim off this bark, which you're not going to want to so that you don't actually add any fat to the pan, because that's the secret of the whole thing. So trim it off all the way around. If you want, you can throw that out in the yard for the birds. Or cook it up and give it to the dog. Or cook it up and give it to the dog. But just get your meat nice and clean. I'm just gonna... Okay, when you turn it, this is the important point. This is where you have to work a little bit fast. We're going to turn and put butter on, and then we're going to use this parsley to keep the butter from sliding off. It's a rather unique process, and you might wind up using your hands in here. Just basically get in there, turn your meat. Now's the time to put the fan on, because it's going to start getting a little smokier. Take a pad of butter. Use your fingers. All good chefs have to use their fingers. Put a pat of butter on each one. Take your parsley and sprinkle parsley on the top and it kind of keeps the butter from sliding off as it melts. Adds to the taste too. Adds to the taste, definitely. This is part of the final sauce. We get just a small amount of sauce between the lemon and the cognac. We've got that part done. We give it a shot of Tabasco. And again, this is all to taste. It depends on your own individual taste. Some people would go crazy with Tabasco. I like just one shot myself and one shot at Worcestershire. We're all set now. We wait about another minute, and then we finish it off. OK, why don't we proceed on with the last part. This is the part where you really need your fan going, because it gets a little smoky. Then comes a little touch a la George Munger. He pours some cognac over the steaks in the frying pan, dips the pan so the flames touch off the cognac, and you have flaming pepper steak. Now this is one maneuver you don't want to try in a kitchen with a low ceiling, and you don't want to get too close to that fry pan either, or you could wind up with some singed eyebrows. The finished product, a delight to your taste buds. The recipe is yours in good taste. You've probably seen a scene like this a million times in those old movies, the trainer timing the rider. The rider's name is Jackie Fulton. This is her husband, John. How'd she do, John? It wasn't bad. She got away a little slow, but she worked all right. John, what's the lure of all this? How do you become a trainer of racehorses? I started to, uh, I planned to be a veterinarian. And I went to work for a vet who was managing a thoroughbred farm in my whole hometown. and. Uh, we ended up working for George Steinbrenner, the Yankee boss, and, and uh, the excitement of this kind of lured me away from the veterinary business. Is this work, is this a job to you? No, it's not really a job to me, it's fun. Uh, it has to be that way. It's uh, seven day, days a week, and uh, you have to really love what you're doing. How many horses are you training right now? I've got about 18 here. Here comes Jackie now. Mm. That was quite a ride. <laughs> Tell me, how'd it work? That was pretty good. She broke slow, but then when she got running, she ran up in there and ran, finished pretty good. Didn't you know, a lot of people would say, you two have the ideal situation. Husband and wife, <laughs> you get to work together in something that you love. Does it make for yeah. a strong marriage? It helps, I think. You know, that way, otherwise you never see each other until the end of the day when you're both tired in this way. You know, you have to get along better. <laughs> John ever it give you a tough time when you don't ride those horses right? Oh, yeah. He yells at me more than anybody. <laughs> he 
he knows I can't quit. <laughs> Let's go back over where all the work's done, over the stables. Okay. What happens if you don't have any winners and the season's over? Well, if we don't have any winners and the season's over, we're going to have a <laughs> tough go of it for a while. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to make it. Uh, we don't get much, really, for our daily rate over what it costs us to operate, so it, uh, it's a tough go. Uh, you've got to be successful in this business to make a good living, but you can if you, if you are successful. Yes, Jackie had to go work that other horse out, huh? Yeah, she had one more to gallop, so she'll be back in a few minutes. But... John, what are the responsibilities of being a trainer? Well, generally, I've got to decide what's done with each horse daily, their conditioning and care and uh, uh -huh. preparation for races. And This is a little young filly that's new to the game. She's a little excited. This filly here just ran in a stakes race, and we usually take her and put her in this whirlpool daily to give her a little stimulation in her ankles and keep any feeling out of it. Is this like baseball? Do you have a season? Do you keep moving around? Do you get any time off? Is it a seasonal job? No, it's year-round. It's, it's every day of the year. There's different race meets and there's some breaks in between some of the meets, but uh, it's it's seven-day-a-week job. You got something running today. Yeah, I've got uh, Tricky Finesse's running in the stakes race today. Mind if I come up and watch I'd it with you? I'd love to have you. Okay. The sun has come out, and it's 12 hours later, almost 5.30 in the afternoon. And it's time for that all-important eighth race. The race with Tricky Finesse, John's horse. John, do people really understand what goes on in racing today, behind the scenes, back in the stable? I don't think they do at all, Jack. They, uh, people don't realize that most of us are in here because we love the horses and enjoy working with them. They, I think a lot of people have kind of a dim view of the people in racing rather than just that we're ordinary people out here trying to make a living and it's something we like. They don't go around giving horses speed balls and no. shots and doping them up? No, that doesn't go on. In any business or any industry, you're going to have a few bad apples, and I'm sure there are some in this business, but generally the people are out here good, honest, hard-working people. It's time for you to go to work, huh? I've got to go saddle this filly. Good luck. Thank you. While John is saddling Tricky Finesse, we'll get a position here along the rail of the paddock and watch those horses come in. Well, main thing is get around the first turn okay, I guess. Try to save as much ground as you can, then let it run around. Look down the backside, yeah, I'd think so, don't you? I think that filly on the outside's gotta go. And, uh, just let it run on her own, try to save as much ground there, and then try to get clear horses down the backside so you got a place to run. And win. We want to win it. You nervous about now? Yeah. She went right in the gate, didn't she? Yeah. That's all of them. Every time we run this filly, she's got bothered coming away from the gate. Every single time we run. She's had three starts, and every time she's got bumped coming away from the gate. Yeah, yeah, she must wear some knees today. She's the filler that comes from back. She's coming up. So far, so good. She's running a good race. Yeah, she's going to have to go wide on this turn, so I hope she doesn't lose too much ground. Thank you. 
too bad. It wasn't a bad race. I thought she'd finish better, but tough, tough spot. What happens now? What do you do with this horse now? Well, there's a couple options. Uh, there's, a, there's a bigger stake coming up at the same distance where she'd have to run against these same fillies, which could be kind of tough. You know, if we'd have been one, two, three, we'd, we'd probably go for it. Uh, I'll have to evaluate. She was beaten pretty good here today, so we'd have, we have to supplement to the stake, which means we put up $7,500 to run in it. So you're only pretty sure of getting a big piece of it, and I'm not too sure off of this race if we can or not. So I'll talk it over with the owner, and we'll we'll see. We've run her three or four times pretty quick in a row, and we might give her a little breather, wait about a month before we run her again. You're obviously a little disappointed by yeah, all of this. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to have seen her if she was capable of a little bit more, but. Then again, this is the first test against these kind of fillies, and the first time around two turns. So it's it's tough to you don't know until you try it. Uh, she showed she's a pretty nice filly, but maybe not with the top. Uh, just has to take stock, see how she comes out of the race, and go from there. Mr. Fulton, good luck and thank you. Thank you very much. The race is over. The future for Tricky Finesse is undecided at this time. For John Fulton, well, today was a disappointment, but he has 17 other horses in his stable, and a lot of days he doesn't walk away from this racetrack disappointed. If you're one of the folks who keeps an eye on the stars, here is Jack White's journal astrologer, Carolyn Precourt, who says, if you're a... Virgo and Libra, and if you felt you didn't quite fit your sun sign description, Rest assured, you're among those unique individuals who can have the best of two worlds. You're delightful, keep them guessing types born on the cusp of these two signs. You've a rare talent. You can be downright critical, but with such charm that people, instead of getting mad, say thank you for your advice. Speaking of advice, for all you birthday people, next week get busy and finish those projects you've been meaning to get around to. I do believe that Jack must have peeked at a moon calendar. The moon is in the same sign tonight as it is in his own chart. Jack's moon is in Aquarius. The moon rules public opinion. Aquarius rules TV broadcasting. This is an excellent influence for his show. A final word for those of you who want to lose a few pounds. Next Wednesday will be a great day to start. Until next week, I'm Carolyn Precourt, your star lady saying, let your stars be your guide. This segment has been presented for entertainment purposes only and is not intended to be an accurate scientific forecast. And speaking of forecasts, we would not attempt to predict the outcome of tomorrow's game between the Chargers and Denver. But here's head coach Don Coriel with his comments about the big game. Dallas coach Tom Landry said that Denver played old-fashioned football, nothing fancy in beating the Cowboys last Sunday. Do you see tomorrow's game as their old-fashioned style against the Coriel sophisticated aerial attack? Well, they scored uh, 41 old-fashioned points against Dallas. <laughs> now, I don't know how they did it except by uh, really tackling and blocking and throwing the football and running the football, doing all the things that you do to play good football. They're a, a really a fine, solid football team. And uh, we're going to try and be the same thing. We don't know how much we can run against them. They have a, a great defense against the run, also against the pass. We, we hope we can throw against them. We certainly are going to try and run against them. We're going to be watching. Good luck, Coach. Thank you very much. Well, the race is over. And now these tickets are either going to be valuable or only collector's items. I hope you've enjoyed our first program and will join us next Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. And by the way, if you would like that recipe for pepper steak that we showed you a little bit earlier in our program, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Jack White's Journal, KGTV, Post Office Box 81047, San Diego 92138. We'll see you next Saturday night at 7 o'clock. <laughs>